Donald Trump's suggestion that Second Amendment people could stop Hillary Clinton if she became president and appointed anti-gun judges sparked outrage and shock among his critics. Less shocking was Trump's response, calling out the dishonest media. It's called the power of unification. Second Amendment people have amazing spirit and are tremendously unified, which gives them great political power, said Jason Miller, senior communications advisor for the Trump campaign, in response to the uproar over the comment. And this year, they will be voting in record numbers, and it won't be for Hillary Clinton, it will be for Donald Trump. The statement was serious enough to prompt a comment from the U.S. Secret Service, but according to Trump, it was just another case of the media misunderstanding his words. It's not the first time that's happened this election cycle. Here are some of the greatest offenses perhaps the first Trumpism that spread like wildfire was his criticism of John McCain in June 2015. Trump slammed the Arizona Republican senator during a presidential candidate's forum in Iowa, claiming he has not done enough to curb illegal immigration. Moderator Frank Lutz cut in, pointing out that McCain was held for five years as a prisoner of war. That's when Trump said, he's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? His comments came under fire from his critics, including several of his then rivals in the GOP primaries. In their eyes, Trump's comment was a slap in the face to the sacrifices McCain and other service members have made for the USA. Trump later said on ABC's This Week, I'm very disappointed in John McCain because the vets are horribly treated in this country. He claimed he has used his fortune to help veterans, which has since come under scrutiny. In the first GOP debate, Fox News host Medjin Kelly questioned Trump's treatment of women, including his use of epithets such as fat pigs, slobs and dogs directed at certain people. In retaliation, Trump questioned her menstrual cycle. I think she's highly overrated, he told Don Lemon on CNN. She starts asking me all sorts of ridiculous questions, and you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes blood coming out of her wherever. She was, in my opinion, she was off base. Trump clarified his comments on Twitter, saying he meant Kelly's nose, not her genitalia. He later said only a deviant would think otherwise. He had a different response when conservative blogger Eric Erickson disinvited Trump from an event that weekend in Atlanta. Erickson said he didn't want someone who gets a hostile question from a lady and his first inclination is to imply it was hormonal. A Trump spokesman, in turn, Erickson's actions were another example of weakness through being politically correct. While on the campaign trail in South Carolina, Trump pushed back against comments made by New York Times reporter Serge Kowalski about a story he wrote shortly after the 9-11 terror attacks but he did it by calling out Kowalski's appearance. You've got to see this guy, Trump said at a rally. He bent his wrists and jerked them around. The story in question was one Kowalski wrote in 2001 as a reporter for the Washington Post. In it, Kowalski wrote that New Jersey law enforcement authorities detained and questioned a number of people who were allegedly seen celebrating the attacks and holding tailgate style parties on rooftops while they watched the devastation on the other side of the river. When Trump referred to it to bolster his claim that he saw thousands of Arabs celebrating 9 11, Kowalski went on CNN and pointed out that he didn't see large numbers of people celebrating. Trump's remarks sparked outrage, and to this day some of his critics bring it up when they say they cannot support the GOP nominee. But Trump suggested the blowback was just the result of the Times' constant hits on Donald Trump. The Orlando shooting that left 49 patrons of a gay nightclub dead and dozens more injured, becoming the deadliest mass shooting in recent U.S. history, was quickly politicized on both sides. Whether it was because of the suspect's arsenal of weapons or his self-radicalization and support of the Islamic State. Among Trump's various comments on the terror attack, he suggested the massacre could have been less severe if people had been armed in the club. 
Days later, NRA Vice President Wayne Lapierre told CBS's Face the Nation, I don't think you should have firearms where people are drinking. Lapierre must have misunderstood Trump. The next day, Trump tweeted that he meant security guards and employees all along. Donald Trump deleted a tweet criticizing Hillary Clinton after it was accused anti Semitism. USA Today Trump's mockery of Clinton becoming the presumptive nominee backfired when people realized the anti Clinton image he tweeted had a six pointed shape resembling the Star of David against a backdrop of $100 bills. Attention quickly turned to what appeared to be unconscious anti-Semitic overtones in his critique of Clinton, from the Nazi Germany era's yellow star label to the age-old stereotype that Jewish people are money-hungry and corrupt. Trump later said the star was a sheriff's badge and blamed the media for making that connection, even though the campaign got the image from a neo-Nazi internet message board. Perhaps the most powerful moment of the Democratic National Convention was the speech delivered by Kizr Khan, father of U.S. Army Captain Humayun Khan. Kizr and his wife, Ghazala, who are Muslim, criticized Trump in front of a packed stage and millions of TV viewers for his proposed ban of Muslims from entering the U.S. in front of a packed stadium, among other broad statements about Muslims. He vows to build walls and ban us from this country. Donald Trump, you're asking Americans to trust you with their future. Let me ask you, have you even read the United States Constitution? He said, holding up his own copy of the document. You have sacrificed nothing. And no one, he added. We cannot solve our problems by building walls. Trump, as he normally does, responded to the attack. First, he said he thought he had made several sacrifices and suggested the speech came from the Clinton campaign's writers. Then, he released a statement saying that while Captain Khan is a hero, his parents have no right to stand in front of millions of people and claim I have never read the Constitution, which is false, and say many other inaccurate things. He responded the next day on Twitter. And again the day after that. Trump's critics, and even some within his own party, blasted him for his attack on the Gold Star parents. Among those who responded were military groups and McCain who said the nominee's remarks does not reflect Republican values. Weeks later, the feud continues to haunt the Trump campaign. U.S. Senator Susan Collins of Maine cited it as one of the reasons why she cannot support